So the golden age of comic books continues to roll on, and let's be fair, it's almost certainly going to for the foreseeable future. I mean, Warner Brothers can make three uniquely shitty films and still manage to drag their cinematic universe kicking and screaming into regrettable existence. But the advantage isn't just going to the big cinematic universes. Kick-Ass, Dread, Snowpiercer, and Atomic Blonde all owe their origins to comic books. It seems like if you can get your story into print in comics, you've got a better than average chance of getting it into a movie. All of which raises one big question. Where's my Transmetropolitan movie, goddammit? Transmetropolitan is probably my favourite comic ever written. The series ran for five years and covers five years in the history of a future city. After a few standalone initial stories, the series locks into an overarching narrative about a truly insane sociopath worming his way into the office of the president and Jerusalem's quest to oppose him. It is mind-blowingly funny, heart-wrenchingly tragic, pointedly satirical, and stunningly beautiful. In one of its earliest issues, Spider describes the city as neither utopia nor dystopia, something which I think is absolutely essential to the appeal of the story. Technology has improved, but humanity still has all the same flaws that it did previously. Through it all, constantly observing, strides Spider, endlessly writing, documenting the world as he sees it, trying to communicate to those around him his beauty and its tragedies, its moments of bizarre hilarity, and the moments of vicious anger. It is, to my mind, one of the greatest comic books ever written, and if I'm avoiding discussing any specific plot points, it's because I genuinely think you should go out and read it yourself. Just for a single example, one of the greatest issues of the comic is called Another Cold Morning. It explores the plight of a 20th century photographer who's frozen and passed on to the future. It uses this as a lens to question our society's routinely awful treatment of the mentally ill. Now, a lot of people might make the argument that as a truly successful comic book, Transmetropolitan shouldn't be a movie that it would suffer in the adaption. And you know what? 15 years ago, I probably would have agreed with you. It used to be that comic book movies, particularly those based on less prominent works, wouldn't really receive the biggest budgets. And technology being what it was at the time, that would probably have resulted in us not getting a terribly good Transmetropolitan movie. But for God's sakes, it's 2017. Surely we can make one that looks good now, right? I mean, you're telling me we can make movies as pretty as Valerian, but we still can't manage Transmetropolitan? More importantly, this story gets more relevant with each passing day. Hell, the kind of journalism that Spider does in the comic didn't actually exist in the real world when it was being published. But with the rise of the internet, there's continually more voices out there like Spider's. For example, during the penultimate arc, when Spider breaks away from his newspaper and goes independent, he essentially becomes what we would now think of as a blogger. Not to mention, without getting too political, having a genuinely monstrous person in the office of the president seems to get more relevant with each passing day. Transmet talks wonderfully about the importance of having someone out there to speak for the poor and socially outcast. It talks about the vitality of opposing somebody who will discard 49% of the population because he only needs 51% of them to vote for him. It talks about the vitality of opposing somebody who wants the office of the president simply because he thinks he deserves it. It talks about what the media can do if it just gives a shit. It talks about why journalism shouldn't just be neutral reporting of facts, it should be written by people who care. It talks about how you can change the world just by telling the truth and demanding answers. It talks about how people with authority should always be observed, always watched to ensure that authority is never overstepped, because authority will always attract those who wish to abuse it. These are messages that people need to hear. Perhaps it sounds obvious to you. Fine. But we must continue to bang the drum over and over again in every medium that we can. So why is no one making a Transmetropolitan movie? Well, apparently Flying Freehold Productions offered to purchase the rights in 2003, and at one point Patrick Stewart was apparently tied to an attempt to bring it into existence as an animated series. In 2008, Ellis said that Tim Roth would be his ideal casting choice for Spider, which, uh, I mean, maybe. I don't really know who I would go with, but Tim Roth seemed like he could do a fine job at it. But later, Ellis pointed out that there were still no plans to bring Transmet to the screen since no special effects could do really do it justice. I'll be honest, I really don't agree. Eagle Eye viewers may have noticed my bookshelf containing these entries from Ian M. Banks' culture novels. These also get regularly dubbed unfilmable due to the special effects budget that would be required. Now, there's more credence to that than with Transmetropolitan. This book, for instance, features a cheerful, mellow ambassador who also happens to be an eight-foot-tall, three-legged chitinous monster as its protagonist. That would probably be more than a little difficult to keep from overriding the rest of the film. But this one, Use of Weapons, could easily make an excellent science fiction political thriller and character study. So if we can make a culture movie, 
I can't think of a single reason why we couldn't make a Transmet one. The last piece of information I could find about a Transmetropolitan movie or TV show was that Warren Ellis was meeting with some people from Netflix in 2014, and there was some speculation on if it could be regarding something Transmet related. But, but nothing about merged, and those meetings were likely with regards to his work on Castlevania that came out this year. Hey, Netflix. You've got a working relationship with him now. Make it fucking happen. I will come to your door and I will throw money at your face. Just make Transmet happen. Please. Please. Please.